had some of the most brilliant people, some of the most innovative people all over the world. There's just no basis for the condition in which Nigeria is today. And that is the reason why we are offering ourselves to take the country back and we are urging our compatriots, our co-citizens, to do the same thing wherever they might find themselves. And for those who can vote, to make sure they vote, those who can to fund the process and to mobilize those who can vote and to just say, hey, you know, for the first time, I want to bond together in jettison our religious, our religious differences, our ethnicity, and all of those things have been used to divide us because that's the only reason we've remained conquered for 58 years. Wow. Uh, we won't be taking any call right now because we have so much uh, that we want to put across, uh, you know, to the incoming uh, president. Um, I'm also going to have, uh, you know, uh, Prince Aze uh, to uh, to be on the seat and also uh, Mr. Mecca at one point to uh, join I us. That maybe I should also say that the outgoing president is also in London. Well, we're going to have to. <laughs> I mean, you, you're coming in and yes. we also have, uh, you know, we've already, uh, you know, mentioned that. Uh, but the most important thing is um, we will have uh, Prince Aze. He's one of the, uh, you know, the community leader as well right here in the United Kingdom. And he's also an advocate for humanity. So he will be uh, joining us on this, uh, you know, platform as well. Right. And also we have a publisher, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, Mr. Emekanya. Emekanya. Uh, yeah. yeah, okay. He's also yeah. going to be joining us as well uh, so that we can be able to get it going. But I don't want to waste too much time. Um, would it be more relevant to have 36 Shuwere in the Senate rather than being the president so as to make a difference? Uh, when you say 36, this Nigerian Senate has uh, 109 people. Okay. So. Yes. And uh, I am not aspiring to become a senator. I have actually said that I would love to abolish the Senate. If I can. So I cannot apply for a job that is no longer going to be in existence. But that's not the issue. The issue is that uh, we must start to dream big so that we can be free in a big way. The most important position in Nigeria is the position of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. If I wanted to be a senator, I would have gone to the Senate. But what the Senate does to me is it limits my ability to contribute to my quota in a way that I want to do it. Uh, if you have a chance to have a big package, you don't settle for a fraction of it. Uh, if I were to be in the Senate, I would be a good senator, but I would be a better president than being a good senator. Uh, like I said, I don't know if there are too many people who are proud of our Senate. I've not uh, hidden my position on the Senate that uh, it's, it's an organization or a body that is right now peopled by rogues. The Senate president is undergoing trial for corruption. About at least 50 senators are involved in corruption uh, allegations. One of them is in jail. I think two of them are in jail as we speak for stealing and, uh, and corruption. So, and so you don't expect me to go to such a place and make an impact. I cannot find myself in a company of rogues when I know that what needs to be done is a real job. I'm going for the real deal. So those who are limiting their ability to dream big should just come with us. Because that is also another thing is that um, this is good. We're infecting people who have no self-esteem to get it right, to not be afraid, wow. to get their esteem up. That you can, anybody can be president of Nigeria. And that's another point I want to prove by doing what I'm doing. And all it takes is for you to have the motivation, to have the intellect and the capacity to do it. So far, the people who have been running the country, Nigeria, are people with low intellect, people with limited capacity and capability, people with limited vision, if not blurry vision, people without mission. So, and we can't keep rewarding those characters uh, with better or bigger responsibility. That's why we. Where, where, where we are today. Okay, um, how do you intend to cut down the expense of House of Red? I mean, you want to abolish the Senate, you know, if you have, you know, As if, I have, if you have your, your way, if, if I have my way, if you have I'm your way, but it, how it, do you it, intend the to... The US Senate is a waste of money, a waste of resources, a waste of space and time. Um, what we should go back to doing is investing in the Nigerian people. 
what the law says, the Senate or the National Assembly right now is out, it's breaking the law. The law for revenue allocation says that an average Senate, each Senate is only entitled to a million point five naira as uh, monthly allowances. Right now they are taking home 13.5 million naira. If you multiply that by one year, the allowance is not salary now of a Nigerian senator is higher than the salary of a civil servant receiving 100,000 naira, no, 300,000 naira per month times 35 years. So somebody who is going to work for 35 years as a Nigerian civil servant will receive the same amount a senator is receiving in a year. In allowances alone. The senators also have allocations they call constituency allowances of 200 million naira per year every budget circle, which they practically steal. They carry out another criminal agenda, which is what they call oversight functions. And the oversight functions takes them to ministries, departments, and agencies of government. And it's purely an extortion racket. So they force them to bribe them, otherwise they would not approve of their budgets. So after the budgets are approved, they still go back to these ministries to force them to send them on foreign missions, they force them to pay them extra codes, they force them to employ their friends. So this racket has to stop. Our nation must be put back on the path of uh, progress, peace, and prosperity. And we cannot do it when we have criminals managing our affairs. Wow. Thank you very much uh, for that. Um, once again, for those of you that have joined us, uh, you've got all your uh, fans that have been you know putting in a lot of questions but we will hold on to that but what i want us to uh you know to look at is what are the plans in mobilizing youth at the grassroots across the country when you talk about young people or youth you're talking about how best to reach them yeah. our strategy is to use social media that's one of the major factors there are over 40 million nigerians on facebook alone one of the biggest in Africa, if not in the world. And they stay engaged, they interact a lot. And we have to just use that. Today, the biggest billboard in the world is WhatsApp. You know, millions of millions of our young people are on there. Not only young people, you know, old women, men, uh, a lot of people. Nigeria has more internet penetration than a lot of countries in the world. There are more mobile phone users in Nigeria than you have in Canada and the UK combined. Because most Nigerians have two cell phones. Uh, you know, we're like, uh, you know, a status symbol. You, won't, you must have an iPhone, the latest, for some people, and a Samsung, and you know, and several others like that. Some have one and four cell phones, because, you know, which is part of our problem that has to be solved by a new competent president is that the cell phone companies, the telecom companies are killing Nigerians with billing. So, and they have poor services. So for you to function across Nigeria, you must carry at least one telephone line per telecom company. So if you get past, we, we were in uh, Oweri, you couldn't, you couldn't get signal anywhere in, in Oweri. If you, if you don't have, for every street, you have to use a different phone line to get uh, great communication. Same thing for different parts of Nigeria. So, again, we have to reach them and we are reaching them. And all these young people, as you can see, they're following us. And they're not just following us, they are organizing themselves around our ideas, around our agenda, around the things that we have verbalized that are possible for them to do. And you know that these young people are not foolish. They know what is possible, they know what is obtainable. Uh, elsewhere, because as you know, Nigerian youths are well traveled, well exposed, uh, they have a global mindset. That is why they live in Nigeria, but their soccer clubs are based in the UK. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and they live in Nigeria, their telephones are made in South Korea. Uh, they live in Nigeria, their cars are made in the US. Very, very, very global set of young people global mindset and that is why we just can't wait to unleash their you know innovation on the world what you see now that nigeria is known for 
is you know the inverse side of being innovative you know even being able to do fraud the way we do it baffles law enforcement agents around the world but nigeria must move to the other side of it the positive side of it where we are creating apps because we can be the technological driver for uh for africa or for the world because we have young people who are very fast on their feet who are very creative but they don't have electricity they don't have infrastructure they don't have hospitals um, they don't have schools that can accommodate even their ideas. I've met a lot of them that are homeschooled. And the question you ask yourself is, how is it that a guy who couldn't do well in Lagos is doing so well at Harvard or doing so well at Oxford or Cambridge? It's just, it's just something just limiting in the country. And we must take up that veil so that Nigeria can meet the world. Wow. Um, your strategy uh, plan for Nigeria between... 2019 and 2023 mm -hmm. what are your strategy plans we have them encapsulated in what we call spicer heat uh, and we're starting to break this thing down in a way that they are consumable uh, and this is to focus exclusively in the next four years on 10 things and one of it is security there's no way we can have anything else done without securing the country uh, the country is bleeding right now uh, power. We just have to electrify Nigeria. And until we do that, we are deceiving ourselves about, including even improving security, you need power to do it. The, the more there is light, the less you have crime. Because so many of the petty crimes committed in Nigeria are done because there's darkness everywhere. Uh, infrastructure, we have to turn Nigeria in the next four years into a construction site where we are building everything pretty much that we need you know roads power lines dams bridges uh we're building schools we're building pretty much everything beautiful if there's a word like that uh and in doing this we must have a robust policy on fighting corruption you know that's the scene there anti-corruption and we're not going to do it in this deceptive way that is being done right now it has to be holy so we have to fight corruption in such a way that we prevent people from stealing, you know, because sometimes it's harder to recover, you know, it's cheaper to prevent than to recover. The moment they steal the money, recovery costs money. In fact, it costs more sometimes to prosecute someone who stole a million dollars than it is to prevent him from stealing it. Uh, so, but in case of those who have already stolen, we will embark on massive prosecution, massive recovery of public assets. I am not the one to shy from saying that people have to go to jail if they are stealing. You cannot destroy the future of 198 million people and think that you'll be sitting in a palace pretty happy when the rest of the country have been deprived of water, hospital, you know, roads, all of it, and then you have grounded them to a halt and you start giving them handouts that you call stomach infrastructure. That cannot be acceptable. Uh, so. We have economy, but the kind of economic development we want to have is not the PowerPoint economy they are doing now, where each time you ask them to show you how the economy is doing, they show you PowerPoints. But people are hungry on the street, people can't find jobs. You cannot have the kind of economic policy that we have where we have no growth, but we have progress. And it's a lie, you know, it's, it's, it's the reason I'm opposed to that woman who came to be finance minister in Nigeria for two consecutive Okonjo Wella. She's a failure, she should admit it, and she should apologize for it. In other places, what she did would have been regarded as a crime against humanity. Supervising an economy where thieves had free hand to loot whatever they wanted. I don't consider that to be brilliant, even if you have a Harvard degree uh, for me. So another thing is restructuring, that we have to restructure the country. It's nothing wrong to talk about. There's nothing wrong to talk about restructuring. Some people, with different people, we have different attitude towards restructuring because restructuring has been taken to be something of an attempt or, you know, it, it's been used as a threat. So some part of the country feel that when you say restructuring, you want to leave them in poverty or penury. The other part makes it feel like, oh, restructuring is a superiority contest where if we restructure, we will be better than one side. No, we should do it in such a way that everybody is carried along. But for me, the first restructuring that has to happen in Nigeria is economic. We must empower people. They are purchasing power. 
with, you know the ability to play globally must be uh, must be strengthened before we can talk about anything else. Then we'll come and discuss what the kind of constitution we need. My problem with the current proponents of restructuring, and I say, and I'm not afraid to say it, is that they are not the people to speak for me. They are too old to decide for me. Our restructuring plan must include where the world is. We are living in a digital era. Someone who is 80 years old cannot understand the Nigeria of the future when he's already at the departure lounge of life. So I don't want to have a restructuring that is done for me by you know, Lufala or Baba Edwin Clark or Ayu Adebanjo. I want a restructuring done for me by you, me, that are in this room. Because it's our future that is at stake. We are not at the table where they are having a conversation around this restructuring right now. They are talking at us and talking over our head. But yet, it's going to, the future that they want to design is going to be for us. But guess what? The truth is that their restructuring battle cry is a cry for empowerment for their class. Because for them, Nigeria is their social security unit. That's where each time they lose out of the power sharing game, or the loot sharing game, they bring out a complaint, and that's how they reunite and reorganize again, and we are left out of uh, the empowerment game. We cannot afford that anymore. So after restructuring, we're talking about health, education, agriculture, and tourism. You know, when we say terrorism, it includes this, our ability to just captivate the world. Look at entertainment, you know, look at Nollywood, what we are doing with it. These are things that, you know, and, and I said to people, why can't Nigeria have an airline where you can go from here to London and eat Nigerian food and watch Nigerian movies and, and just be part of the global game of moving around? Right now, for those of you in London, you know what Nigeria means to your family. Everywhere. Nigeria is the only country in the world that you use to threaten your children. All you need to say to them is, I'm, I'm taking you to Nigeria. And they'll say, Daddy, please. <laughs> Anything you want me to do for you, I'm not going to Nigeria. Nigeria should not be like that. Wow. It should be a country with which you entice your kids and say, we're going home. And it's Daddy, when? You know. But Nigeria is such a shame now. So that's, in a nutshell, what we're planning to do for the next four. There are other things that we follow. We just can't, it's, it's a huge package, mm -hmm. but this is just for you, a peep into the future uh, and the bright future. Wow. Uh, we're going to have the phone line open in just about two minutes from now. The number to call to the studio is 0208 This is a special broadcast coming live to you on Star Radio UK. Um, in the last 12 hours of being well, less than 12 hours that you've been in the country, uh, I know you were having some Nigeria food, so it's good to know that we will be having some airline, our own airline, where we could have, you know, our own food. Yeah. We still have, you know, a few more questions. I could tell you that there's an entertainment person is in the building as well. Uh, you know, you did mention entertainment is very, very entertainment important. Entertainment is big. Uh, it's, I mean, it's not only economic uh, powerhouse for us, it's also a cultural thing. You cannot want to conquer the world without having something that is sweet that you can present into people's ears. Uh, and the country that produced Fela Kuti, Wole Shoyinka, Chino Achebe cannot just be there without a well organized, you know, uh, package that has to be going to the world. This is the country that produced Shinamanda Diche. Wow. You know? Wow. And the you know and Chiwente. And all of this fantastic guy, even uh, uh, what is it called? The, these musicians, the, the, uh, um, no son, the, the one who is there, so, yeah. uh, this whose parents are half Nigerian, is based in the UK and then in the US. Uh, we'll, we'll go back to him. No, Shad is from Nigeria. Nigeria is the home of the boxer from the UK. Joshua, Anthony Joshua. Anthony Joshua. Joshua. Anthony Joshua. Joshua. Right. We have we so much to offer to the world. But guess, imprints, yeah. but guess what? Nigerians are there out there doing wonders, but they hate to be associated with Nigeria. Wow. They are abandoning their citizenship. You know, the day President Buhari was in the UK claiming that Nigerian Jews are lazy, a Nigerian girl 
was winning the 100 meters uh, hurdle. Wow. Yes. Wow. I'm also, the same day, the same, and President Babangi and uh, Buhari was uh, on the Commonwealth political end. She was winning it at the Commonwealth Games. Okay, we've got a call coming through now. Hello, good morning. Uh, where are you calling from? Okay, sorry, I need to put my cap. Okay, uh, well, uh, you're one of the first to have uh, your question live and direct with the president coming in 2019. Make sure you stay tuned to that question alone. We don't want you to elaborate because we've got a lot of people that want to call. Straight to your question, please. Thank you very much. I'm sure uh, he's got that question. Uh, devolution. What do you think about devolution? Again, the line is open. Uh, if you want to join us on this, uh, you know, the call to the number to call is 0208 And uh, once more, uh, we really appreciate you taking your time to come down to the studio to um, speak to the Nigerians and the African community that are re living, you know, in United Kingdom. Um, before the next call comes in, uh, what I just want to find out is, and then I will be able to bring in uh, Prince AZ and also uh, Emeka to join us as well. What will, you, what will you do with regard to the ongoing feud between the Hausa, Fulani and the Igbo? There is no feud between Hausa, Fulani and Igbo that I know of. What you heard is the headsman you know, who are mostly Fulani, uh, engage, engaging in all kinds of criminal activities, but it's not, hold they're on, not hold targeting... Hold on, Colin, hold on, Colin. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I want you to land on that yeah. course, yeah. They're not targeting Igbos. They are, in fact, their greatest victims are people in Zanfara, where they're carrying out what they call cattle rustling, uh, right? Uh, and they affect Yoruba farmers, they affect, they affect people along the grazing routes on a daily basis. So there is no, that I know of, a feud between Hausa, Fulani, and Ibos. And we have to be very careful about how we frame some of these issues. Uh, because it ties to the question of devolution. The question the guy is asking me is uh, 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 devolution of power. It's different from breaking up Nigeria, right? He's kind of suggesting that Nigeria should be broken up. Let me explain this to you. There is no nation in the world that has one united or one single entity of people. America today has got Spain, I mean, I mean, Spanish people, Spanish-speaking people, they have English-speaking people. There are Yorubas in America, there are Igbos in America. In New York, every tribe is represented. But you know the difference is that whereas there is social justice mm -hmm. in that place and it's bringing about unity, there is no social justice in our place. You know, the, if there is justice, the whole of the continent of Africa could be a country and we'll be happy. Okay, all right. Let's um, take that call on right now. Um, your question, straight to your question. We've got a very busy line. What your question uh, to Omoye Leshoure? Good morning. Uh, your life, uh, it can hear your life and direct. Hello, good morning. Yes. Yes. Uh, the other caller she needs to hold on. Let this person finish, please. Go ahead. Wait.
Thank you very much. Uh, we've got that. Uh, let's get the next caller to uh, put the comment through. Thank you very much, uh, caller. Next caller, please, uh, you know, once again, thank you very much uh, for joining us on this special broadcast live on Star Radio UK, your finest Afro-Caribbean radio station. Uh, let's get uh, the call coming through. Uh, hello, caller. Hello. Okay, maybe you might want to take on, um, you know. Yes, uh, the question about the China currency. Yeah. I, I don't want to jump into something I don't know. I don't have the details yet. Nigerians officials are fond of lying about their international engagement. So until I find out what truly has transpired, because this is not the first time we are hearing about the Chinese currency swap. Uh, uh, they haven't been, yes. Are, yes, what, 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 hello, 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 hello. Hello, good morning. Just hold on. Uh, let the lady go first, then uh, we will take you one at a time. Just a question and under a minute is a very busy line. What is the question, please? Okay. Um, we are on to something here. <laughs> yeah, uh, it is a very, very odd line. The, line, um, the lines okay. are blowing up. Okay. Yeah, you go on, um, okay. uh, the, the lady on the line I want to speak right. to. Everyone, uh, please, 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 all those on the line, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hello, hold on, hold on, hold on. All those on the line, please, hold on. You no, cannot go on you listen to what we are telling you. All those on the line, please, uh, just hold on. We're going to start from the number that's... Okay, hold on, hold on. Please turn your sets down. We can. There's so much feedback coming. Turn your sets down. Can we go to the lady number ending 022? Yes, please. Go on. We can hear you. Go on, please. Yes. That's it. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, let's take now the number ending 1022. 1022, your question now, please. Okay. All right. Th all right. Thank you very much. I think. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, let's take the number ending now with 144. Good morning. Mm. Yes. One four four. I can hear you. One four four. Just continue. I can hear you. Please go ahead. Hold on, please. Yes, one four four is on the line. You are live, but you gotta hold on. Whoever is speaking needs to hold on because there's somebody that is speaking already, so that we can get you in as quickly as possible. You just hold on. Let the person speaking land before you come in, please. One four four, you are still live. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 That's right. I do, I do, I do. We had a conversation, yes. Thank you. Thank you. 
All right. Thank you very much. Uh, we've got the message. Thank you very much. We've got so much people that want to speak. Uh, 3207, number ending 207. Yeah. You're live now to speak. 207. Nigeria. If your number is 3207 from Nigeria, there's a call from Nigeria. That is the one I want to pick now. Good morning. Well, if your number is not 3207, three, let the person with the three... Uh, let person with two no. three two zero is gone. Uh, let us now. Uh, then the person, um, the person will go to Nigeria. The one three two zero no. seven, just continue, please. Yes, yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, we will, thank you very much. We will take two more and let him um, answer the calls. Uh, so the the number ending now with um, eight eight nine. If you want to put your question now, and then we will let him answer some of the question that is already have in hand at the moment. We will get you through. We will clear the the board first now. But the number ending in eight eight nine. If you want to go live now, please. We got that. Thank you very much. Uh, let's take now uh, the number ending uh, unknown. We've got an unknown number. If you're still there, hello. There's a lady online. All right, you just go for it now. Just just put for it now, and then we will then put this call on hold until we. Okay, I think we got that. Let's now take all these um, comments that have come through. We still have an unknown number. If you're still there and the number ending 009. An unknown number. The unknown number, are you still live with us? Good morning. Hello? Well, anyway, the unknown number is gone. Let us um, take all the comment that have come through. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of, uh, the, the line yeah, has been jam-packed. I'm, uh, but I'll let you take it according to. Call really, wait, really excited. Yeah. That we're getting this number of calls coming in at the same time. It's a sign of good things to come. And it shows that people have a lot of expectations and uh, they want to engage and participate in this next uh, process. And as we go to the next level. So I will answer the question about if I don't win. I don't see how we want to win this. 
we have the population, we have the enthusiasm, the energy, the courage to take on the old people who have taken Nigeria to the cleaners. And it's just for us to clean them out of the system uh, and we would be fine. There are 75% of us who are below the age of 40 as a population of Nigeria. The election that was won last time was won by 12 million, maybe about 12 million to, was it 15 million votes? And the next person was like about 12 million votes. This we have over 40 million votes for young people lying down there that we just need to pick up our PVC on that day, go vote, and we will have a clean by by midnight on February 16th, which by the way is my birthday. Uh, so you guys have to give me that gift. Uh, you know, it, we would be, it would be very clear where Nigeria is headed with regards to the results of the election. We don't need to do too many things. We don't need to go too far. We don't need to stress ourselves. We have the number. We just need to take the necessary steps to mobilize people to go and vote ourselves. And for those of you who cannot vote, stay on the phone with your relatives on the day of election. But before then, make sure that you stay on the phone with them now until they get their PVC. If you are sending money to Nigeria, let it be PVC related. That, um, you know, even if you need to put additional jar, as we call it, to ensure that people are mobilized and you can make sure that they send you a copy of the PVC before you send your next uh, Western Union or whatever transfer you are making home. So this is not something that is difficult. Carrying people along is what we have been doing. I don't know if any one of you have seen our video of 23 days in Nigeria. We, just, we play that uh, yes. you know, just before it's you It's unbelievable. It. The place is ripe for it. And there's no part of Nigeria we went to that people were asking us about religion or ethnicity. They're just saying, what can you do for us? When are you ready to do it? We went from marketplaces to palaces. We went to schools. Uh, we went on the road. There's no way when it's as if everywhere we, we went, somebody had prepared the ground for it. But nobody was preparing the ground. It was that people have become very conscientized and conscious of what needs to happen next. And they know, they can see the pureness of our heart in our movement. And they've seen that we have done this before. I have 30 years underneath my belt of fighting for what is right and good in Nigeria. I fought all these guys that are there today. We read about them in history books when we were in secondary school and I mean primary school. When we got to the university, we had to fight against them. And some of them are still around. This is the time to clean the Nigerian organ stable and free Nigeria from the shackles of the incompetent and the corrupt people who are mad. I don't want to use any unprintable words on, on air. But I'm upset that we are still debating whether you know it will be Showare or Buhari at this time. The, 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 the difference is clear. And we are not saying even Showare, I don't want to use the word Showare, let's say it's we and them. The difference is clear. We should not be, by now we should be forming our cabinet. <laughs> you know, this, this election should be done very early, first mentally and then physically. But we have to have a mental, you know, intention to win. We have, people have to decide. People have to, see, a lot of people are still in doubt. They have to move from the region of doubt to the region of clarity, that this can be done, and that's why I'm not thinking about losing. Religion. Religion is a very sensitive thing in our society, but I've been to church, I've been to mosque, everybody is looking for a fantastic country, and there's always a correlation between religiosity and poverty. Okay, let's <laughs> just take uh, two more calls, yes. because I know you, you have to head out of, of, yeah. of the studio right now. Uh, just two more calls, uh, uh, and then we let you go. Uh, 136, 136, the caller 136, uh, your question straight away. Hello? Yes, just go ahead with your question. We can hear you loud and clear. Okay, Professor Dennis. All right, let's go straight to the next caller, uh, 621. Caller 621. No, one, one. We haven't got time for that. Just one, please. Thank you very much. Just one question. One question.
right, we got that uh, local government. Yeah, it's, right. yeah. It's, well, that it, is the line it, is closed it, now. It, it, uh, it we're fight, sorry, we won't be able to pick any yeah, more calls. The fight against corruption would be from the federal to the local government. But the question should be how we stop our governors from stealing local government funds. It is part of the reason why you know government is not percolating to, I mean, real governors is not percolating to the grassroots. That and that's part of the reason I cannot stand some of the people who are proposing restructuring of Nigeria. Some of them were former governors who refused to allow local government elections to happen for eight years, like the governor of my former state, I mean, my state, uh, Ondo State, former governor there. For eight years, the guy did not allow local government elections to hold in Ondo State. He did not release local government allocations to the local government. But he's one of the people who is proposing restructuring of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. When you had a chance to restructure your state, you refused to restructure it. And you expect me to believe you when you say you want to restructure Nigeria. I know this is a bunch of liars. Mm -hmm. And that is why we must have a clean break. Somebody mentioned healthcare. It's very important because. A lot of our people are actually engaging in ensuring there's great health care for other people around the world outside. We have to start with primary health care first. Mm -hmm. A lot of people in Nigeria have never had their blood pressures measured no. in, their, in their lifetime. And we have to deploy primary health care givers and providers mm -hmm. to the grassroots. It's the way to de the, the devolution that we are asking that we should start with. It's not the devolution of power that allows people to drive Mercedes Benz. It should be the devolution of governance to ensure people get health care, they get you know, rural roads, rural electricity, they get those minimum basic needs of life that they deserve from government. So this is, I'm, I'm sorry that we don't have time to yeah. discuss, but I really appreciate your enthusiasm in London. Yeah. You can come tomorrow to come hear me directly and actually ask questions yeah. at the University of yeah. South East London, yeah. Stratford well, Campus. Tomorrow uh, it's all happening from 2 p.m. at University of East London in yeah. Stratford Campus, yeah. yes. where you're going to be having four hours you know, straight. I uh, will have a lot of questions. You'll be yeah. able to call in as well. At one point, maybe we can yeah. take your call during the question time. Let's just, uh, before, uh, because uh, I know Prince AZ has been sitting here for the last two hours as well. Um, your question um, to uh, Amoy Enishore, and then we can tell him, you know, thank you very much, so that he can start making his way right now. Yes. Mr. Sorry, yes. thank you to have you, it's brilliant. Yes. And my question is, looking at the children, mm -hmm. because for me I know that in every child, yes. There is talent hidden mm -hmm. that needs to be unlocked. Please, how do you intend to ensure that we unlock the talents of each child? Because they're all unique. Mm -hmm. Because it's this talent that will make the dream you are expressing here come through. Yes. How are you going to do that? Secondly, I need you to tell me how you're going to change the military. The military mindset, because for me, the military in Nigeria is geared towards suppression of its own people that it ought to be protecting. How are we going to change that mindset? All right. Those two. Thank you. Okay, let us um, take one more uh, from uh, Mr. Emeka mm -hmm. as well. Your question to uh, uh, Omoyele Shogure. Yes, you're welcome, Mr. President. Thank you. <laughs> My question is this. You see, leadership a leader is somebody who does something people thought was not possible yes now can you tell do you have the men yeah do you have the mentality because everybody has ability mm -hmm. but the problem is mentality mm -hmm. do you do you believe strongly you have the mentality to take up this task right. thank you very much and the last question uh, from m prince uh, in the building as well what would be your question uh, to um omoyele showery yeah, my question is all about, um, I'm, a, I'm one of the ambassadors for UK Afrobeat in United and Diaspora. Mm -hmm. I want to ask a question, what plan do we have for us, we, uh, the Afrobeat artists living in Diaspora? And also, regarding, are you trying to, when you come in, in next year, which we believe you will definitely come in, are you planning to set up a special organization for the, the entertainment industry in Nigeria that will give us a chance in order to operate in our music area in all of our diaspora. Okay, that's gonna be the final question as well, and then and I'll let you take that, and then we can. I'll, uh, I'll go very direct yeah. with you regards to your question about the child. The solution is education. 
more education and bigger education we have to let schools be built in every nook and cranny of nigeria and maybe the best way to do it is also partner with churches and mosques there's a church now in every corner of nigeria but there are not schools or mosques is to make sure that they have a role to play in providing qualitative free and acceptable education when i use the word acceptable i know what it means because there are some education that just teach people rubbish and that is what we have right now the government must make deliberate investment whatever potential you had that brought you to the uk you probably first discovered in school you know because school is just not a block where it's a place for engagement and interaction there are schools in nigeria that did not have teachers but the students became great people because they had a chance to rub minds with others. So schools are great solution. Education is a big solution and technology is gonna help us bring more education to people. I keep saying that it is no longer necessary to build a big library anymore. I'm sure you've heard about the Sacropodia, right? The one that used to have on the wall. People are selling them and nobody wants to buy because you can put an encyclopedia here. That is what Wikipedia is about. Technology has to be brought so aggressively into our education. So that instead of having libraries with books, we can have notebooks with several libraries. Um, military, look, we have to just stop our military from engaging in civilian activities. You cannot see a UK military man on the street beating up people because they don't engage in controlling traffic. You know, the moment there is no war to be fought, they take off their uniform. It's, the solution is to strengthen our police force. Uh, and I want to take the force out of police, you know, because the police we have now has a constabulary mentality. It was the way the British set them up uh, before independence that they're still behaving. So we have to create a police department as opposed to a police force. A police department can have different roles to play, including, including community policing. Uh, but the police force is out there to suppress. That's how they're designed. So we must take all of that from our military uh, system. We, the mentality to do that you mentioned, I mean, I single-handedly created a website 12 years ago known as Sahara Reporters, which all of you know. And there's nobody that has not taken on, that's taken on the rich, the powerful, uh, sometimes even some individuals that are not particularly powerful and rich, but are aspiring to become thieves. And all of them, we have been able to confront them. We've confronted problems that we thought had no political solutions, like the problem of a yard where I was dying in hospital and people were lying about his state of health. That was going to tear Nigeria apart. You know, when Nigeria was going to be torn apart in 2015 with the election, it was our timeless, I mean, time, time, time uh, reporting of the election that brought about a free and fair election. And that's where Nigeria is still with. Up until then, what was the prediction about Nigeria in 2015 that Nigeria would break after the election? But we're still there mm -hmm. today because we had a free and fair uh, election and this we contributed uh, heavily to that. So I'm always the guy who loves to do things that people think uh, uh, is impossible and we're about to do the next impossible uh, next year. Entertainment. Entertainment is such a huge industry that uh, we don't have to be constructing epitaphs of former entertainers, we should construct a city of entertainers in Nigeria. And that is where you guys come in. We have to pay special attention to entertainment because it is a money earner and we cannot just ignore it simply because. That's why I was talking about an airline, I'm just using that as an example. Can you imagine getting on an aircraft to Nigeria, you're flying for nine hours or 12 hours, and you get the chance to watch five movies and all of it is from Nigeria. Right now, you have to beg Delta to give you. I don't even think there is a, there's a Nigerian movie on British Airways yet. And they make the most profits from us. KLM goes to Nigeria. Every, Ita you know, Alitalia, British Airways, Virgin Atlantic, all of them, they are heading to Nigeria, you know, Emirates. But you, Emirates is the only place we have ever found a Nigerian movie, only five of them. But we have to change that. We, you know, we have to take this message to the world by replicating and multipl uh, multipl uh, multiplying our cultural influence the same way that 
we can do that is the same way that we can make money, more money from entertainment. You look at it now, every major US artist wants to go and perform in Nigeria. But we are not getting our artists to go and perform in the US because we are not making it competitive. But we are doing well in Africa. Can we do better? Of course. You need a president who has an entertainment mentality. Most of our presidents actually think entertainment is sin. Yes, it's true. Yes. That's, the, that's, the, that's, 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 the, that's the way they think. They don't go to movies, they don't participate in music carnivals. You know, they are not allowing entertainment to flourish because they have this puritanical mentality that entertainment is sin. Whereas entertainment is big deal. Our value added taxes mostly come from entertainers. You know, most people that are coming to Nigeria bringing in dollars, bringing in euros, bringing in pounds are entertainers. So mm -hmm. you can guarantee, you can guarantee that uh, you have a major, major place uh, in our future. And also the same thing with sports. I mean, look at you know some of the best guys that we produced to the world in the last twenty years. They were soccer players. You know, the JJ Okoshas of this world can. You know, they took it from nowhere to the highest level. And they're flying the, the uh, Nigerian flag, Rashidi Yekine. So why is it that you do not have a stadium? In Nigeria? There's no stadium you can call international standard in Nigeria. We should have a stadium in every university, in every high school. You know, what, what's wrong with us? But whatever is wrong with us is about to be right with us. Wow. Yes. Woo! Um, just uh, to close it up now uh, to everyone that have been watching us from all over the world and listening to us what will be your closing remark and thank you once more for joining us on this special broadcast. There's no closing remark yet <laughs> 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 because we just started so uh, but it's great to say to our people those who are watching following us online that uh, there's more to come and we urge you not to make it about a show or affair it's all of us. Everybody that's upset about what is going on in Nigeria should be on board. There's no, there's, it, it should be on board as of yesterday, you know. And forget ethnicity, forget religion. We have the same blood flowing in our system, you know. Uh, they've used that to divide us for too long. But when there's hunger, it doesn't recognize Igbo, Hausa, Yoruba man. When there is, uh, when there is disease, it doesn't recognize poverty. Don't have any respect for religion or ethnicity and the way Nigeria is today was because they've used ethnicity to divide us for so long, they've used religion to suppress us for too long. If we get past that, we will be in dreamland. The same thing that we're trying to do now is what the Europeans have done and they call their beautiful part of the world the European Union. So how about an African Union? <laughs> I'm saying that Nigeria is not even big enough for us. We should be playing on the continent of Africa. That's where we should be. So if the Europeans can get it right, Africans should be able to get it right. So that we'll be discussing policy, international affairs, trade on the same footing. Not that somebody will be dictating to you which products you should bring into their own economy and which products they can dump on you. Wow. We will play the national anthem uh, just to close uh, this special live broadcast. Uh, thank you once again to all our viewers. I hope you've been able to uh, um, enjoy it as much as possible, but make sure you join us tomorrow from 2 p.m. at the University of East London at the London Town Hall meeting. Uh, to all the team that are working around the clock, uh, the Showray UK team, I say to you, Thank you very much as well, and we'll be back again with you tomorrow. Uh, for those that are watching us, uh, coming up next is the Star Money Show with Mr. Ache. But once more, thank you to all the viewers and listeners. Make sure you join me on Niger Voices every Wednesday between the hours of 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Once again, let us listen to the National Anthem. Thanks for listening.
I believe in prayer as well as work. So please, can we just say a minute of prayer? I need to, my God says we must pray. Mm. This man is doing the work, so I need is this it? prayer. Please, my dear brother, if you don't mind. Almighty and ever living God, the Father of our Lord Amen. Jesus Christ. We just want to cover this man, this young man you brought in our midst to liberate humanity. You put the words in his mouth to speak, and that, mm. that those words are refreshing our hearts. Mm. Now, God Almighty, we know that each time you are working, the devil wants to interrupt. Now we cancel every proud, every plan of the evil against him in Jesus' name. Amen. We cover him because we know that even when you sent Moses, you yes. had to cover him. Mm. Therefore, we pray that you giving us our Moses to liberate us. Mm. Now, God, cover him in Jesus' name. Amen. Cover him in Jesus' name. Amen. Every plan of the evil one defeated in Jesus' Amen. name. We commit him now into your hands. Amen. Go, and God will be with you. Amen. Oh God. Amen. Oh God. Oh God. Amen. Listen, I'm giving you these are copies of my books. Okay. Okay. There are four of them. That's mine. I'm just giving it to you. Wow. I've put some of the questions, some of the things I wanted you to think about as little things here. Wow. In each of them, I didn't want to overlap you with words. Like here, you can read in this thing that gives you a little bit of an idea of what I'm thinking. Wow. And here, I keep maintaining less oriented our people. Wow. In each of yeah. them, yeah. we can't so can read the whole thing. Just, 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 or even just the front room. Yeah, they can take pictures. Of the the I've given you what to do on the next slide. May God spell with you. Thank you. I'm the publisher of this magazine, okay. Sea Hub Magazine. Wow. In fact, my wife wanted to interview you on Top Talk. But is that a radio not, show? Or? It is a, it's online. Wow. Top Talk. So, but that's, what do you have Richard's number? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll give you. I'll give, we'll give you. Richard's I'll give you our contact. Uh, yeah. Who's gonna be there? My brother. Um, my, thank you. My name is Abba Geda. I'm ambassador for UK Artists Africa in the United Kingdom. So we really we have got all our funds together to already support it. Doctor. So sorry, you see, God, studio you environment once I get working, thank you. Uh, let me, let I have to do one minimal self interaction. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, good. All right. Let's um. Let's go out outside. Thank you. Let's start moving now. Yes. We're heading to do this. Okay. Yes. Yeah. We're heading to. Yeah. Now we're heading to BBC now. Empress also going with them to BBC. So we're all going to BBC now. Can you take him? Um, take so him yeah. The bar. yeah, we take Photo the picture driver. now. Yeah. Photo driver, uh, could okay. you just take a bit off? Uh, the, the Can I refly? Right. Right. All right. I mean, uh, the Here, that's okay. it. Yeah, actually, yeah. 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 them as well. Then, okay. right, let's that's the front one. Okay. 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 Right, right, right. <laughs> Okay. Okay. 